Hey folks, I've got an interesting video to share with you today. I flew my Mavic Air 2 over a, uh, I don't want to say abandoned research facility, but it's certainly not active anymore. And it was a research facility. It's about 30 minutes from my home. Uh, some interesting things that I saw on this facility. So join me as we fly over and I discuss some cool details. Let's go. Okay, so it's probably nothing that serious, but at any rate, this building is located on Mead Avenue in Richmond, and it sits between 580 and a nature, uh, you know, bird preserve public shoreline. Uh, and it does raise a couple questions because there are signs on it that, that do say, you know, that there is contamination in the area, um, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, so there could be some possible risk. I don't know. Um, but at any rate, you know, here is a building. This research facility was used uh, to... I guess, research or create uh, the drug called Gen, uh, Geranova. <laughs> and uh, it's a, some kind of lipoic acid or something they used for Alzheimer. I'm not a scientist. I just want to explore the building with my Mavic Air 2. So, um, but what I do know is look at this building and the size of it. A building like this was built for a specific purpose. Once the purpose is over, here they just sit. They just sit, these large structures taking up space um, and rusting and decaying. Uh, let's take a look at some of these filtration systems on top of one of these labs. There's two labs here, lab 106 and 206. Look at all those old filters and uh, things that have been taken out of those. Uh, I guess they're just a filtration system. You know, and, and here's a whole array of these things on top of this, this lab. and. What I'm getting at is the amount of money that it must have cost to build this lab and now it just sits and they it must have produced enough money that they can just let it sit and rot. <laughs> you know, if that was my stuff, man, I'd be trying to get my money back out of it. But, you know, uh, there's a lot of these filtration systems on top and a lot of filters have been taken out and thrown everywhere by vandals or whatever. Don't know that I would have touched those filtration uh, filters being a vandal if I was a vandal. I don't think that would have been too safe. Who knows what was on those filters? But anyway, <laughs> so let's keep scrolling here with the drone. And, and let me show you this other picture here. This is interesting because they left this building. It had planters and flowers and trees and paved stones, pavers in there. Uh, it, it had a nice break area and, and grounds and landscaping, but they just left it. They just, it's served its purpose. They've moved out. And what is the end game of this building? Yeah, like I say, you know, what's the end game he here of a building like this? They spend all this money to create this huge facility. They use it and it, like I say, it must have produced enough money that it could just set and they're not worried about the cost of it just, you know, uh, deteriorating out there, uh, you know, in this land. But look look how large this place is. Uh, you know, you've got these greenhouses out here. They, they must have grown something in there on that lab. I'm not sure which building was lab 106 and 206, but you can see there's some surveillance here uh, that the security or the police department used because vandals have obviously gotten in here and, and messed a lot of things up and, you know, spray painted everything. But look at these greenhouse structures. I'm going to take you closer in a minute and, and you can see there's still lights hanging in there and there are light fixtures. I don't know if the light bulbs are in there, but, you know, this place cost a lot of money and it's pretty neat to sit and think that, you know, at one point it, it was producing and researching drugs that might have helped people for various ailments, uh, one particularly Alzheimer's, I guess, uh, you know, but there are signs around the building that do say that there's hazardous contaminants, you know, possibly in the soil or something, I don't know, but, um, you know, it's, like I say, it, it's just a really neat place to fly the drone over and kind of explore. I didn't trespass, I didn't go inside the building. I've gone in enough buildings uh, that were abandoned in my time to know that all you ever find is ticks, trouble, tetanus and <laughs> and rat poop <laughs> i don't want any of those things i'm good let's just fly over it and take a peek and see what we can find so here's a zoomed in picture of one of the windows i don't know what's in there i can't tell papers perhaps a control panel to a, a teleportal i don't know 
<laughs> but Rub might know. <laughs> Apparently Rub has been here and he's explored the entire facility because the words Rub are all over it. <laughs> anyway, uh, but let's keep moving. You know, there's a, it's a big facility and like I say, a lot of money and planning looks like it went into this and here it just sits. And, you know, it's not like Walmart can move in here and take the building over. This thing has to be torn down and something has to be totally rebuilt in its place. Uh, so and that's that's one of the things that's hard to wrap your head around for for somebody like me who has to decide, you know, what kind of cheese I want to buy for the week. If I can buy name brand cheese or generic cheese. Here, these people get billions of dollars. They build this huge facility. They use it. They leave it. They don't care about reclaiming any of it or trying to recoup money back out of the building or maybe repurpose the building or I don't know. But look at all these uh, systems on top. I guess these were ventilation systems maybe that pulled air out and filtered it before it went back out into the, you know, to the public. I'm not sure, but it's a really cool view to be able to fly around with the Mavic Air 2 and explore some of this stuff. Look all the way back in the distance back there, there's another lab. And like I say, there was lab 106 and 206. I'm not sure which building was which, uh, but stick around to the end and I will also post um, the MSDS sheets that were used for this facility that do show what chemicals were used in there and the response, the hazardous response uh, techniques that were required to respond if there was a, uh, you know, incident with those chemicals. So stick around to the end and I'll post those. They're public documents, so I'll post the link also in the description. But look at all those filter systems, you know, uh, pretty cool. All that land back there. Um, is pretty neat too. There's a guy back there with a skid steer and a pickup truck doing some kind of light cleanup. I don't think it was anything really hazardous because he didn't have any PPE and it's just a little skid steer and a pickup truck. But at any rate, uh, you know, it's still interesting to note that the land is, is really big and it's, you know, there's a lot of trees and there's a lot of nature back there that could certainly be reclaimed, uh, you know, but you know, it's, it's cool too to be able to fly over old structures you know, like this and just kind of wonder what they were and let your mind wonder, oh, it's a research facility, you know, maybe they were doing some kind of diabolical stuff. But, you know, it's uh, it's fun to fly the drone over and kind of explore these places, um, you know, and, and check them out. And I don't see anybody poking through the windows there and waving at me, so <laughs> I think it's all good. Uh, but there is a skylight there and it was, you know, you could see it's been spray painted and look at the size of this thing, man. It's just huge really huge. You can see the surveillance center down there in the bottom. Uh, I don't, I'm sure it's active. Um, I don't know if it's active for drones, but it doesn't matter. I'm a remote pilot licensed and I'm good to be there. <laughs> and I'm going to take you and show you some of the pictures here of these in a minute too, as we like go around toward the front of, of them and you can kind of get an idea and see what's inside. Here's a guard shack, you know, you would come to work every morning, I guess, and you'd pass through the guard shack and they'd raise the little arm up and you'd get to drive into the facility. You know, wonder how many people that worked there, you know. Uh, this company seems to be headquartered in Nevada. I can't remember if it was Carson, Nevada or somewhere, but it's in Nevada. Um, but these greenhouse structures, uh, I wanted to get closer, but line of sight and all, I, I and trees... You know, I didn't want to risk anything uh, being outside the facility and having to somehow try to go in and retrieve my drone if it crashed. But we're going to take a look here uh, at one of these greenhouses. I'm going to bring a picture up, a still image kind of zoomed in, and you'll be able to kind of look through there and see. You know, all these fixtures are just hanging, and these tracks and different bays uh, existed in there. And um, I don't know what they were growing, that they were maybe researching to pull whatever compounds or whatever out of the, the plants or something. Uh, but, you know, that's what it looks like inside. There's some bunch of aluminum and copper and stuff in there. I'm surprised all the copper and aluminum bandits haven't gone in there and, you know, slowly tore the building down wheelbarrow by wheelbarrow <laughs> and taken it to the recycle center. But, um, but it's kind of cool to be able to look in there and see. There's a lot of glass. There's a lot of structure. A lot of money went into that. And just to leave it, like I say, what is the end game, man? What is, what is the end result of this? You know, you've you've got a lot of money sitting here that 
you know I, I just don't understand the logic behind behind it uh, you know sitting there and not being used for something else but you know what a cool place regardless you could see those big fans exhaust fans on the side of the greenhouses there pretty cool man you know uh, I had a really good time with the Mavic Air 2 I want to make a note also I did post some videos about connectivity and things like that flying with the Android tablet I did this entire video using the Samsung Samsung Galaxy Tab A 8.4 2020 version had no problems at all with connectivity flew beautiful I love flying with this tablet um, I've had some feedback from some other users uh, who unfortunately they can't use tablets I guess in their country that's a bummer but I appreciate everybody's feedback on that and input on the uh, using the tablets and flying with Android tablets uh, but at any rate let's fly back over the top of this glass here and lots of glass lots of sunlight was meant to come into those buildings uh, you know they could repurpose those out here for somebody to uh, you know grow their medicinal cannabis or something <laughs> it's California somebody could have rented those man <laughs> anyway uh, but at any rate you know it was a fun morning I told myself I was definitely gonna get out here and video this uh, I did so on the way back from doing some owl photography out there on the coast and that was really a fun time too and I made it a point like I say that I was going to stop by here on the way back uh, this is only about 30 minutes from my house so I took my drone and took off from outside the gate man and buzzed around and and here I'm sharing it with you folks I appreciate it like and subscribe guys if you haven't already um, I try to bring content all the time it's all photography related uh, you know and you know just having a good time with it uh, and stick around because those MSDS sheets are going to come up here at the end and you can kind of see the chemicals that were used in this place and how to respond to chemical incidents uh, is explained in the MSDS sheet also um, but that being said man I appreciate it guys thanks for watching and uh, like and subscribe and you guys take care to the next time